Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to use a micrometer to get measures of length down to a hundredth of a millimeter. It's quite a wonderful instrument. Uh, I mean, most rulers only go down to uh, millimeters and most vernier calipers go down to a tenth of a millimeter. This one goes down to a hundredth. Now of course, uh, bear in mind a hundredth of a millimeter, it's still ten micrometers. So the micrometer does not actually give you readings in micrometers. It's a bit of a misnomer. Just bear that in mind. Um, it is a wonderful instrument. There's a usually a fairly big limitation with these micrometer is its own size because what we measure has to fit into this part here. If we have a part that's bigger than that and won't fit, then you can't do it with this micrometer. We will have to measure something smaller. Um, just before we get started, we'll show you a quick rundown of some of the vocabs you may or may not need in order to use it. So we've got the anvil, spindle, the frame, the sleeve, the thimble, and the friction clutch. So I'm going to take it away now because it's not super important. You can pause and review. <laughs> okay, so the thing that we're measuring is the distance between this thing called the anvil and the spindle. This is the this gap here, you see? That's the distance we're tracking. As we move, as we turn the thimble around, the spindle will retract and we'll get the get the length. Okay. So with the thin with the thimble here, let's line up the zero with this horizontal line. We turn it one full revolution. You notice it went from five millimeter to six millimeters. So each turn on this micrometer gets you one millimeter of travel. And that one millimeter is divided into a hundred equal pieces all the way around. So that is how we can get down to a hundredth of a millimeter with our precision. So the last thing is in order to use it, you open this thing up further than you, than you need, put the part inside. Now this part is key. As you close in on it, you want to switch from using this part to this clutch back here. And you notice that once it closes in on the part, the clutch starts to slip and the number is not moving anymore. This is important because it prevents us from over tightening my um, micrometer, which will hurt the threads in here, which will eventually hurt the instrument and you can't use it. <laughs> so let's read. So the first thing we read is we read the millimeter along the sleeve here. We got the 0, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 is just kind of showing right there. So it's about 19 millimeters. To get the last two digits, or the fraction of the millimeter, we run along this horizontal line and see where it intersects. So in this case it looks like 0.76. At this point, you might want to ask yourself, is it more likely that it's 19.76 or 18.76? Given that the 19th mark is just showing, it's probably 18.76. And that's how you have to decide it most every time. So once you finish reading the number, you uh, should definitely double check your zero reading. Close in. Use the using the clutch once again near the end. And this horizontal line as it comes across. Oh, you actually notice it's less than zero. So it's a negative zero reading of negative point zero one point zero two negative point zero three millimeters. So when we subtract the zero reading to get our true reading, we we'll end up getting a bigger number. In our case, eighteen point seven six minus negative 0 0.03 gets you 18.79 and that's how we got the diameter of this cylinder down to a hundredth of a millimeter using a micrometer. Thanks.